What's up everybody? I hope y'all are having a wonderful day. My name's Anthony and today I'm going to try something I've never attempted before. And that's going to be making bread from freshly ground wheat. Alright, so a little bit of background context for this video. Now, I've obviously been a huge fan of making bread. If you've been a part of my channel for any length of time, you know this. However, my friend Rob over at Rob Painless got out his grain mill a few weeks ago, and he started grinding down some uh, wheat berries, something that I have not done before because I don't have that grain mill. And I've actually been looking at that particular grain mill he has for a few years now, but for some reason I put other things in front of that. And that's kind of how that works, right? Like, you put other things in the range of importance, but uh, something that you've always wanted for a very long time just keeps getting pushed back, 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 back. Don't ask me why I've done that, but I have. And it's one of those things where I've never actually attempted to make bread from freshly ground berries before because I've never had a grain mill. So he decided to get up with me, you know, talk to me on the phone and say, hey, uh, I just ground a whole bunch of this wheat berries and have you ever tried making bread before from freshly ground wheat berries? Because I know it's different from the flour you get from a store. And I said, you know what? I never have. He said, hey, let me send you some and you can kind of uh, do your little process to see exactly what I would need to do to make my own bread from this so he decided to send me a whole package full of you know uh, you know things ranging from oats corn and uh, wheat he sent me more specifically the red wheat hard red wheat, which is usually what you're going to find in most stores hard red wheat so he sent me some hard red wheat that he did in his video and then he sifted some because i mentioned that um, whenever you're grinding down wheat berries you're going to get all different parts of that berry and it's going to make the protein pretty high so if you sift a little bit it's going to get a lot of them holes out and it's going to lower that protein content make it a little easier to work with so he sent me a sifted one too so i decided i'm going to uh make some bread using that to see exactly what the process is like that way i can kind of work out all the kinks so if someone else wants to do their own thing they can be like all right well i need this this and this because anthony already did it and that's what I'm going to do today on today's video. A little bit of background though, if you are going to be doing this with any kind of wheat, you have to understand that the wheat you buy from a store is already going to be stripped and sifted. Most of the time, a lot of the wheats you're going to buy, a lot of the flours you're going to buy, are going to be bleached and enriched. Basically, in a nutshell, we've been making bread for thousands of years, but as we've progressed as a species, we have desired a certain trait to our bread to make it more upper class, not being white bread. Now, for those of you who don't know, whenever you grind down a wheat berry, you're kind of taking that inner berry and the outer hole and grinding it together. When you grind those together, that is where you get the brown color for like a whole wheat flour. It's only through a process of sifting that gets that flour from a like medium to dark brown, depending on the wheat you're using, to a lighter brown or an almost white color, like a tan color. Well, uh, we can go through certain cap, you know, certain type of monarchs throughout the course of history that wanted that very, very, very white bread, so they would leave things out in the sun to be bleached, uh, basically to try to get the whitest bread ever. Um, kind of one of those things where if you look at through history the wider the bread the more upper class you seem to be so throughout the course of uh, humankind we've always kind of strived for a certain look to our foods for some weird reason uh, but basically whenever you strip out your color you're kind of stripping out nutrients and a lot of times today's bread you're going to see things like flowers in the store that are bleached and enriched basically giving you that white color but when they do that and they bleach it it strips out all the nutrients, so they have to add it back in enrichment to give you all the stuff that is stripped out by the bleaching process. So to bring that all back around full circle, what a lot of these companies do, like King Arthur Flour, which is what I usually buy, is they go through a process of several different types of sifting to where they can get that lighter color without actually having to bleach their product. However, when you get that lighter color, you're really only using the very inner part of that wheat berry, and the outer hull is going to be tossed away to like bran and livestock feed. So you usually don't get that outer berry at all and if you do it's going to be in that whole wheat flour so since you're really only getting that middle grain it's got a certain specific protein content what i mean by that is if you look at all different types of flours a whole wheat a bread flour and a uh, all-purpose flour we'll say there's different protein contents of this of those types so your all-purpose flour is going to be a mixture and it's going to be sifted very fine. So it's going to have lower protein content. Your whole wheat's going to have a higher protein content because it's got all that good stuff in it. 
So in a nutshell, basically all I'm trying to say is the higher the protein content, the more difficult it is to work with and the more water it's going to need, all kinds of stuff. The lower the protein content, the easier it is to work with. That's why most recipes call for all-purpose flour because it's not as finicky. Uh, so that's kind of where you get the mixture. But if you're in a SHTF or at-home homesteading type scenario where you're going to grind your own berries, you're not going to have these big sifting machines that are going to rotate like this to get you that only inner berry. You're kind of have to work with the whole berry like what we've been doing as a human species for thousands of years. So unfortunately that has kind of fallen out of favor in today's world where we use the whole berry. We usually just use the inner and uh, a lot of people don't know how to make bread with the whole berry, myself included. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take what uh, Rob sent me, these two ones, and I'm going to make a loaf of bread from the legit, just ground down, hard red wheat. Now, first things first, what I have to do is I have to grab my baker's journal. This is very, very important if you want to start making good quality bread. You want to make sure that whenever you're doing anything that you're experimenting with, you're writing it down. That way, if it works, you're not sitting there having to struggle to remember what ratios you use. That way, whenever you finish and you say, you know what, that bread needed a little bit more uh, flour, that bread needed a little bit more water, you can start tinkering with that. So that's what I'm going to do with this thing. So we are going to start by weighing out all of our stuff. So I have the red wheat, the regular wheat berries that were just ground down. And we are at 211 grams. All right, now the sifted red wheat. 299 grams. That is eerily close to my 500 grams I usually always make my bread with. So, Rob, did you plan that out on purpose? Because uh, that's pretty uh, that's pretty good. All right, so if you're better at math than I am, that's going to be 510 grams. I only need 500, so I'm going to start to put all the stuff in here. I'm going to use all of the red wheat that was just ground down, unsifted. All right. Now I'm going to get to the point where I have 500 grams total of the sifted hard red wheat. I'm going to get 10 grams of salt because that is my usual 10 grams. Okay. And one packet of yeast. The reason why I'm doing one packet of yeast and not doing a sourdough is because I want to make sure that if someone wants to try this at home in your household, you absolutely can. Even though a sourdough would probably do 10 times better because the yeast will help pre-digest that whole wheat. All right, so since we are using a whole wheat flour and I've worked with whole wheat flours before, I know they like a little bit more hydration than a regular bread flour. So what I would normally use as 330 grams and do a 66% hydration rate, I'm gonna try doing a 68% hydration rate with 340 grams of water. Basically all that means is I have to up the water because there's more protein in this. And I'm going to put some off to the side just in case it doesn't feel quite uh, wet enough and I got to add some more. So we're going to start low and see if I have to dial it up. Now again, everybody's favorite part is the knead, but you can already see the whole wheat coming through here, how the holes, you can see pieces of it in the middle of the flour. So we can already see that this is a very dense whole wheat loaf. So I, if I had to take a guess, I'm gonna have to add more water here, but I wanna see how it mixes first. See how crumbly that is? There's absolutely no water left in there. So we're going to have to add some more to balance that out. So right here I got 15 more grams of water. That's going to push our hydration rate over 70%. So 
we're going to do that and see how it works out. Yeah, that works a lot better. All right, some of you may be wondering how I knew to do that, and it's simple. Practice. This is why myself and a lot of other channels out there always suggest that if you are trying to do something, you practice now while you can. You don't want to be in a situation where you need to know this stuff and you don't actually have the experience to do it because all you've done is watch people do it instead of trying it yourself. This is why learning to knead is so important. Because when we knead, we're giving it that elasticity and we're developing the gluten. Because as you can see, I can pull this apart. There's no elasticity to it at all. And that's not gonna make for very good bread. So we need to learn how to knead. All right, I got about five more grams of water, and we'll see how that works out for us. You don't want to add too much too fast, because you'll get a sloppy mess. All right, five more. This is why it's so important that you don't dust while you're kneading because when you dust while you're kneading you're adding more flour to the mix and you're messing with that hydration ratio so that's why I don't suggest doing that There we go. There's that stretch I'm looking for. All right. Now, as with everything, we are going to let it rest. Two minutes. All right, it's been two minutes and I cannot stress this step enough for everybody. When you're done, especially with whole wheats, please let it sit because as you're doing all your kneading, you're basically making that dough ball tighter, 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 tighter. It's got to relax. So just by letting it sit for two minutes, this dough has absolutely chilled out and relaxed to the point where it's just coming apart so easy. So that's what I wanted. I'm going to shape it into a better ball like so. And we are going to put it back in here to rise. Alright, I'll be back in about an hour, hour and a half. It has been about an hour and 15 minutes. It's 70 degrees in my kitchen, so it's still pretty warm. And we are looking fantastic. Look at that. Doubled in size. Nice and soft. Let's go ahead and tip her out after I flower my work area. All right. 
that's looking good. I'm going to try to keep as much air in there as I can. I just want to make it look a little bit more like a loaf than anything. So I'm going to basically try to punch it together. All right, we're going to sit like that. And we're going to cover it again and let it proof for about another hour, hour and a half. It's been about an hour and 15 minutes again. The proof is done. It looks good. Now what you're going to want to do while you're proofing is you're going to want to put your Dutch oven, if you have a Dutch oven, in the oven and preheat it to 375. This thing is piping hot. That's what you want. I'm going to take some cornmeal. And sprinkle it at the base. Okay. Now we're going to push this together a little bit. And cut some slices in it. Now we're going to be careful not to touch the sides because this thing is really freaking hot. And boom. Cool. In the oven we go. 375 with the lid on for about 25 minutes and then we take the lid off for 15 more. So I'll see you when we're done. There we go. Nice and hollow. There we go. Let's let it cool down. All right, let's go ahead and cut into this bad boy since uh, she's about cooled down now. All right. All right, first impression is we have a very, very tight crumb. Since I've never actually cooked with 100% whole, whole grains before, you don't have those giant air pockets, uh, meaning that the hydration was not enough. We didn't get enough air in here. So I did about 370, probably go about 380 next time. Give it just a little bit more hydration, that way it's got some more room to stretch because it's very tight. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure it's going to taste amazing, but since there's no vertical movement really, the crumb isn't very open, I would definitely guess that the hydration was still pretty low. So even though we added a whole bunch, I don't think we went far enough. The taste is spot on. Absolutely excellent. But, she definitely had some room to grow. All right, there you have it. I hope you learned something, because I know I sure did. Basically, I should have started off much higher on the hydration. I started off at like, what, 340? Which would make like a 68% hydration rate. Uh, we definitely need to be hitting like 75%. So, uh, I definitely started too low for a whole grain. I now know for future endeavors, if you want to grind your own grain and make a 100% whole wheat loaf, you need to really up that hydration because that whole wheat definitely soaks in a lot of moisture so what I ended up doing was like 370 I would probably do like 385 uh, to make a nice big fluffy loaf but I'm not saying this is wrong by any means this is definitely will feed the family it's very dense loaf it's a very good nutritional loaf I mean uh, it's a hearty loaf for sure it's still very, very good. Uh, just one of those things where I'm a perfectionist and I want to try to uh, do the best I can. So if I had to do it again, I would probably go up about 385 grams on water. Everything else the same.
But if you learned something from this video, please do me a humongous favor and give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And I would also appreciate if you would go see my friend Rob Painless over at his channel. I'll put a link down below uh, just to watch his video on the grain mill and all his other stuff because he's got a really good channel. So, uh, Rob, again, I really appreciate you sending that stuff to me. Uh, it's really good, and I, I'm very thankful that I was able to finally try making bread with a 100% whole grain, ground, straight up, fresh. So, uh, Really, really, really good learning experience. But uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and I'll catch you on the next one, okay? Bye.